That's coming out of reverse. Check. The landing was smooth in Aberdeen. I was just glad that we were on the ground. Happy to be on solid ground. Me too. Hmm. I burst out into tears. It was relief more probably than anything. A little bit of shock probably too. It's up to investigators at the Air Accidents Investigation Branch, or AAIB, to figure out what went wrong. David Miller is the deputy chief overseeing the investigation. I decided that this would be a full investigation because of the closeness this aircraft came to disaster. We then dispatched a small team of investigators to the operator's base to interview the crew and to examine the aircraft. Very quickly, the flight data and cockpit voice recorders are recovered from the Saab 2000. Great work. Let's hope they can provide some answers. Let's hope. The normal process for an investigation is the investigators take the recorders, the cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder, bring them back to the laboratories and recover the data. Looks to be in pretty good shape. Unusually so, yeah. Investigators need to confirm the crew's report of a lightning strike, as well as the flight attendant's account of seeing an orb of light pass through the cabin. Ball lightning is a rare and little understood phenomenon known to precede lightning strikes inside airplanes. Right. Well, there's no damage on the wingtip. Mm -hmm. A lightning can strike more or less anywhere on an aircraft, but it tends to strike on the leading edge of the wings, on the ray dome at the front of the aircraft. Soot marks on the radar. Investigators see signs of a lightning strike on the nose of the aircraft. Looks like some surface damage as well. Yeah? Yeah. The point of strike will often leave scarring, localized burning, sometimes a small hole. Right, let's see where it exited the aircraft then. Elevators look fine. Hang on. Have a look at that exhaust cone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's where the lightning exited. Look at it, parts of it completely melted. There was a little bit of burning damage both to the front of the aircraft and the exit point of the lightning strike, which was at the very tail of the aircraft where the auxiliary power unit exhaust was placed. Oh, crap! The team now knows how the lightning struck the plane. The controls feel really heavy. So one of the first things to go and have a look at what was the effect of the lightning strike. Were the systems damaged? Were there malfunctions? OK, you ready? The AAIB tests the plane's flight controls to see if they're working. OK, check the rudder. Looks good. How about the elevators? Yeah, elevators are working too. Everything checks out. Investigators are perplexed. If the plane was functioning properly, why did it become so difficult to control after the lightning strike? There were no abnormalities, uh, no system defects that we could find either structurally or within the avionics. Beyond that, it looked like a completely normal serviceable aircraft. AAIB investigators interview the pilots of Flight 6780. When we're fortunate enough, as in these circumstances, to have a surviving flight crew, then their recollections are really important for us to understand exactly how the uh, event progressed from their perspective. 
So what happened after the lightning struck the plane? After the lightning struck, the autopilot disconnected. The crew of the aircraft became aware fairly shortly after the lightning strike that the aircraft wasn't responding as they expected to their flight control inputs. And then what happened? We had control issues. The plane wouldn't climb. We tried everything and the plane wasn't responding. The pilot flying was finding that he was having to put an increasingly strong backward effort on the control column to raise the nose of the aircraft. I can't get the plane to climb. How, how's your side? It's really heavy. <laughs> Jim's not doing anything either. Mm -hmm. and the aircraft wasn't responding the way that he expected. And then? And then we entered a steep nosedive. And the control issues continued. until after we'd increased power that we were able to get the aircraft under control. Oh, really? Why did the crew believe that they had control restrictions and control problems when, in fact, the testing of the aircraft showed that there were no faults? Let's have a listen, shall we? Puzzled by the crew's account of the incident on board Flight 6780, Investigators turn to the cockpit voice recorder for answers. It will answer many questions as to why things were happening the way they were and how the crew were working together and interacting together. Aberdeen Ground 6780 taxiing on whiskey for parking stand 7. But something's not right. Aberdeen? Now, this is from when they landed back at Aberdeen. Right, can you stop it and go back to the top and play the game, please? Aberdeen Ground, 6780, taxiing on whiskey for parking stand 7. That's all there is. Well, that's not going to help us very much now, is it? The CVR has recorded over the critical moments of the flight. It's a major setback for the investigation. We discovered that the copy voice recorder, which only lasts for 30 minutes, has been overwritten by subsequent events. So there was no record of the crew conversation and how they interacted with each other. And so you have to look elsewhere for the information. 